Hello everyone. Welcome back to another exciting After Effects tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you my recent logo animation project. I recently uploaded this project on Instagram, and you all loved my work. Many of you wanted to see how I created and animated this logo. So I made this video especially for you. Let's get started. The first thing you should do is observe. Before starting, I looked for a video where a player is playing volleyball. This was my initial inspiration for creating this project. I also used this video as a reference for designing the logo. After designing the logo, I searched for another video reference for the animation and found one where a player punches a ball. I captured this movement and applied it to the logo animation. Before animating, I usually draw a rough sketch on paper or a tablet to plan the animation. Here are some sketches of the logo animation. I hope this information helps you understand the initial steps for creating a logo design and animating it. Now let's move forward, but before that, I want to let you know that you can download the vector logo file and follow the tutorial with me. The link is in the description below. All right, let's jump into After Effects. First, we should import the logo. Double click on the panel, locate the Illustrator file, select it, and choose the Import as Composition Retain Layer Sizes option. Then click Import. After importing the composition, double click on the comp to open it, and you'll see many Illustrator layers. Select all layers, right click, go to Create, and choose Create Shapes from Vector Layer. After Effects will automatically convert our Illustrator layers into shape layers. Once this is done, we can delete the Illustrator layers. This tutorial focuses on character animation, so I won't be showing how to animate the text. However, if you're interested in that, please comment, and I will make a separate tutorial. For now, I'll select the background layer, rename it as background, and lock it. Next, I'll select all the text shape layers and hide them. All right, we have our layers set up. First thing is to rename the layers one by one, as I'm doing here. This is an important step whenever you animate anything. You should always rename your layers. Next, I will add a null layer to this composition. After adding the null layer, make sure it is centered within the composition. Then, select all layers and parent them to this null layer. Press P on the keyboard to reveal the position properties and click the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Move the time indicator to the first frame and change the null layer's position to the center. As I move the null layer, all the layers move along with it. Now select all the keyframes and drag them forward. Place the time indicator around the three second mark. Then select the four layers, go to the search bar and type path. This reveals all the path properties of each layer. Click the stopwatch to create keyframes. Press U on the keyboard to see all the keyframes, then move the time indicator back slightly. It's time to change the character's shape. Select a layer. Use the pen tool to modify the shape as I'm doing here. I know it's a traditional technique, but I like animating this way because it's easy for me. After changing one shape layer, move to another, such as the right hand layer, and adjust it accordingly. Take your time and refine each one. If you're unsure what shapes to create with these lines, I suggest downloading a reference image and using it to guide your shape adjustment. After modifying the character's shape, adjust the head's position. Select the head layer, open its position properties, and add a keyframe. Move the time indicator back a bit, then change the head position like this. Great we've created our first small animation movement. Now we can move on to the next step. Next, let's animate the ball. Select the ball layer and move the time indicator to the desired point. Then add a keyframe to the position property. Move the time indicator back. Add another keyframe. Move the time indicator to the first frame and adjust the ball's position. Reduce the scale to around 80 to 90% and add a keyframe. Then drag the keyframe forward and set the scale back to 100%. Move the time indicator to the first frame, adjust the ball position again. 
To make it look larger, reduce the size to 80% and adjust its position. Add path keyframes for these four layers, including the head layer. Move the time indicator forward. Adjust the ball position. Copy the first keyframe and paste it at the new point. Adjust the keyframes as needed and check the RAM preview. If it looks odd, select the vertex point and use the vertex tool to remove unnecessary handles. Select the first keyframe and set it to Easy Ease. Do the same for the last keyframe. Check the time preview. Now let's animate the leg movement. Set the time indicator at the middle keyframe. Select the left leg layer and modify the shape. For reference, I've added an image of a player bending forward with the ball. We need to replicate this posture with our character. I'll speed up this process as you change each shape one by one. After finishing, you can see we've created the starting movement for the animation. Copy the first keyframe and paste it across all layers to speed up the process. Select the first keyframes and convert them to Bezier keyframes for smoother movements. Adjust the graph editor as needed for a natural bouncing ball effect. Close the graph editor and check the RAM preview again. After that, simply copy the keyframes and paste them as I am doing here. This technique helps save time and effort. Just copy the keyframe and paste it like this. After doing this, Select all the keyframes and drag them backward to match the timing. Next, select the ball and change its position at the last keyframe. It should be slightly above the hand, like this. Then, move the ball upward like this. Move the time indicator forward and delete the keyframe we created earlier. Now select this keyframe, move it this way, adjust the handles of the ball, and then check the RAM preview. If it feels too fast, simply select the keyframes of the ball and drag them like this. Then check the RAM preview once again. Alright, now select the keyframe and duplicate it. Add some more keyframes to these layers. Move the time indicator to this point and change the hand position using the pen tool like this. After that, check the RAM preview. I feel there should be more distance between these keyframes, so I select them and expand them like this. Next, I select the Pan Behind tool and set the anchor point here. Then I open the rotation properties of the left hand, add a keyframe, move the time indicator forward a bit, and change the rotation values to around 30 degrees. Then, I move the time indicator forward, Copy the first keyframe and paste it here. I select all the keyframes and change them to Bezier keyframe. Then I feel that this hand shape isn't quite right, so I change the shape a little bit like this. After that, I add more keyframes at this point. Move the time indicator forward a bit, and at this point, I want to change the character's shape to look like it's about to jump. For your reference, I add a random player image so you can understand the posture I'm trying to create with the character lines. After making these changes, I check the animation by dragging the time indicator forward and backward, deleting unnecessary keyframes. After that, I delete the reference keyframes because we don't need them anymore. Select them and drag them backward to this point. Now I check the preview by dragging the time indicator 
and after making minor adjustments, I select these keyframes and change them to Bezier keyframed. Select the null object layer, press U on the keyboard to reveal all keyframes, and adjust them to maintain consistent timing and spacing. Next, let's add some motion blur to the ball layer to make the movement look more dynamic. Enable the motion blur option and check the RAM preview. It looks good. Now let's move on to the final part of this video, which is camera movements. First of all, select all the layers except the background layer, then click this 3D icon to convert the layers to 3D layers. Next, I add a camera to this composition. I drag the time indicator to the first frame and press P on the keyboard to reveal the position property of the camera. Then click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. After that, I select all the layers except for the camera layer and the background layer, and press U on the keyboard to reveal all the keyframes. Then select all the keyframes and drag them forward a bit, like this. After that, I close the layers and open the camera's position property. I drag the time indicator to around frame 8, and press C on the keyboard to select the camera tool. To switch between different camera tools, just keep pressing C on the keyboard until you see this icon. Then, drag forward to zoom in like this, or drag out to zoom out. Again, press C on the keyboard to change the camera tool until you see the side view icon. Adjust the position of the character accordingly. Now play the video, drag the time indicator to this point, and add a keyframe. Move the time indicator forward a bit and zoom out using the camera tool. Then check the RAM preview. So that's how I animated this character in my previous logo animation project. I hope you learned something new today. That's it for now. See you in the next video.